This video is sponsored by Adorama, affiliate partner of this channel. For all the latest camera gear, lighting and more for your creative needs, please check out the affiliate links in the description box below. It helps support what we do. Hashtag not an ad, this is not even a freebie. They don't give me free stuff. In fact, they're a little bit cheeky though. Last time they asked me to send the lens to somebody else who's reviewing it at my own cost. <laughs> anyway, this is a Kickstarter. I think it's Indiegogo actually, sorry. Um, Nanomorph. So it's so a small... something kind of a small morph. Previous Lau nanomorphs were very compact. The new 65mm and 80mm nanomorphs don't immediately look that tiny, however. Anamorphic, but small ish. Not that land all. Reasonably small for Heavy. an anamorphic. It's 1.5 times, so it's a bit more stretched than 1.33 times but yeah at the same time that you look at the front it's a small filter smaller than the panasonic so 62 millimeter mm. but then you've got the choice of amber or the blue anamorphic flaring oh, okay we should put them on the camera get an idea let's put it on <laughs> so we've got that on full frame just to give you an idea because it does cover a bit more than super 35 there is a bit of uh, darkening in the corners but this will hopefully give you an idea of the bokeh Let's face it, people buy these lenses because they want that stretched bokeh and the flaring, isn't it? The good news for those that prefer their balls elongated, the bokeh balls do take on an elliptical shape. And the overall feeling, while it doesn't completely melt away, looks pleasing with lots of character. You shouldn't expect the super stretchy bokeh that you'll see in the cinema. Having said that, it is pronounced enough. If you look at a Siri 50mm 1.6x full frame lens, the ball squashing is subtle. Likewise with Lauer's shorter focal length Nanomorph 1.5x lenses. Both the 65 and 80mm have more of the bokeh you'd want from an anamorphic. And the flaring too. You know, flaring is sort of an unwanted effect, but wanted effect in certain circumstances. But you don't want it to become like, okay, Let's chuck it in just for effect. Yeah. It becomes it's boring. become a distraction. Yeah. Whereas some other affordable anamorphics give you that wicked flaring by the bucket load, I find that these nanomorphs have just the right amount of restraint. It's not like you'll get it with every light source directed towards the lens. Mostly when the light source is strong and concentrated, it will flare, which is good. I find it annoying when anamorphics have that blue horizontal flare every time you point at something bright. As I mentioned previously, I think the amber probably works nicer for, for daylight stuff. The blue stuff, I like it for artificial lights. As you probably noticed, I've got the amber version, but they're available in blue or amber and now neutral, which I would absolutely go for. The flaring brings enough attention to itself, so you don't need a blue or amber really, but it really does depend on what effect you want to bring to your image. So this is also the same. I mean, this is 18 millimeter version of that. It also uses a, I think a 62 millimeter filter thread. Everything, everything I said about that lens, you can say about this, apart from the focal length, which is different. Both lenses are really not that sharp wide open, although that's not really the number one priority with anamorphics. I can confirm that it's not just Locke's issue with focusing. It can be a pain in the bum to focus using just the LCD or EVF on the mirrorless camera. A monitor is very much needed. That veil of softness just makes it so challenging to see when it's in focus otherwise. Stop it down to T2.8 to get a little bit more clarity in those details without losing the character in that bokeh. Stop it down to T4 at most. Any more than that and you'll lose that anamorphic charm. So what else? It's got dual scale design. Uh, 270 That's degree high focus high. throw. Oh. It's a good solution to have an animal because I don't want to carry a big heavy lens that I'm just going to use for a short while. With that said... So this is an adapter lens thing. Anamorphic adapter, 1.33 times. You just put it on the front of a lens and that adds 1.33 times to it. But if you put it on the front of an anamorphic lens like this, it goes from being a 1.5 times to 2 times anamorphic. Right, yeah. Before we provoke too much excitement out of Lock, let's just say it's pretty much as you see here. And to wrap things up, I like these, perhaps even more than the previous nanomorphs introduced. The flaring is gorgeous, not just providing the right amount of horizontal flaring at the right times, but you sometimes get rings of flaring, little bits of vertical flaring, and sometimes rainbow. And everybody loves a rainbow, don't they? But anyway, let's get the final word from Lock. Oh, anamorphic. I've even thinner and then stretch. Oh.
is it that way or it is right <laughs> yes it's, yeah that's how much i know about anamorphic lens and care yeah so i didn't really sell it did i anyways on indiegogo and when you finally edit and release a video it's gone Yes, and unfortunately the Indiegogo campaign has ended. Oops. Anyway, now for some extra car boot camera content that was deemed too ru uh, rich to fit into the last video. This what one, do you have? I brought this just in case Ooh. we don't have enough stuff to laugh about. Flocking... Flocking thing. tripod from Siri. Oh, we went out of camera to demonstrate it. It's just as well, it comes with a detachable base plate here. Yeah, quick release. Quick everyone, release. Everyone do that. Yeah, well, like I had my camera on it and then... <laughs> The camera was on the floor in the next moment. <laughs> Too quick, quickly release. It's basically copy the design from the Sony yeah. flocking grip. Yeah. Why do you need so strong metal leg to hold it shut? Know. Everybody's fascinated with magnets now, isn't it? They're like six-year-olds design products. <laughs> this is quite a heavy flocking grip. Why do you have to be? Why does it have to be so? Solid. I mean, I get the the idea yeah. of, um, but failed. Yeah. Okay. Oops. <laughs> yeah, I'm shooting some. Oh, food. Oh, I've got some food photography or whatever. Oh, and oh, oh, oh shit. Oh, camera on the food. I was in the shit now. That looks like some dodgy drug paraphernalia. Don't do kids. Don't do drugs, kids. <laughs> Don't do the kids. <laughs> Don't do kids as well. <laughs> you get arrested. Okay, last but last least. This better be good. It's a wireless mic. So it looks like a, a lunchbox for Japanese people. What's wrong with that? It's not um, a dog shit pool box or something. It's lunchbox, good. <laughs> a dog shit box? <laughs> I don't know what this. You have to put it in specifically. Yeah, in take box. away. Uh, don't leave it in the, in, the, in the wild. Let's do a Kickstarter on the dog shit box. Anyway. <laughs> oh my god. Okay, ceremony. Ceremony. When you think it's. Oh, it's, come on, it's like another wireless mic. Well, they have been doing wireless mic for a while. Yes, oh. That's very attractive. Oh? When you, when you mention attractive, you can put your own logo on here. So you upload it there. Yeah, you can put whatever graphic or text or whatever on the display here. Yeah. Um, I don't think I will use it, but you, you got it. <laughs> I think the idea is actually, is interesting actually. I would say it's interesting. Really glad they're trying new ideas. They stop copying anybody. But anyway, that's it for first and perhaps the final episode no. of... We, let's put this on the Super Boca Bros channel. This is this is not going on my channel. Subscribe for more. I have to say this was Locke's idea. So this is... Maybe let's put this on your channel and see how it works. Save it, save it with... Uh, you are going to edit it. So save it with the edit. Save it okay, with the edit. Cut the whole thing.